All right. Hi, everybody. This is Bondalyn Jolly uh, with Wave Group and with B Collective. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm seeing a lot of people popping in right now. Um, so we're going to start in just a minute. But what I thought we would do is just go over a couple of housekeeping items while people are popping in. So we will be recording today's webinar. So that will be available to you. Um, Usually it takes about 24 hours before we send it out. So you'll receive your recording tomorrow. So if you have to drop off early um, or you want a repeat of any of our talking points, don't worry, it'll be coming your way. Um, also, we have a couple of different ways that you can engage with us. So there is a Q&A tab. There's also a chat tab. Um, feel free to open those up, use those. Um, we are looking for a very interactive conversation today. We've got some fabulous panelists and we're going to have a really great conversation. And we want you to get what you really want and need out of this conversation. So ask us questions, whether it's for us collectively, whether it's for an individual panelist. Um, I will be monitoring all of that uh, during today's webinar. And we also have uh, Jason Parker from the WAVE team that is sitting on the back end, who's also available to, uh, to respond to people. So ask us your questions. We want to hear from you. We also are going to be doing a little bit of polling. We're going to start off with a quick poll. Um, we're waiting. We still have a lot of people popping in. Um, but we're going to go ahead and, and ask you three questions to start with. And that's really going to help us understand the audience a little bit, what your needs and challenges are, and that's going to help uh, Brenda, Barbara, and myself. Oh, all bees, and Be Brenda and Barbara. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Um, but that's going to help us shape your conversation today. And then we'll conclude with a quick poll as well. Um, I think that's just about all of the logistics. We've still got some people popping in, but ladies, I think let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to start by introducing uh, my two panelists today. Um, Barbara O'Rourke is the Director of Career Development at Allen Tate. She has been with the Allen Tate company for over 17 years, working with them on recruiting. And if you don't know Allen Tate, they are actually part of the Howard Hanna family. And Barbara has been an integral part in helping that company grow to over 70 offices and over 2,000 agents across the Carolinas region. So Barbara, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And Brenda Thompson is a uh, wonderful um, friend of mine. Uh, she's the CEO and managing broker of Home Smart Stars in Dallas, Texas. She told me it is below 100 degrees today. So, you know, I... She's probably got like a sweater on or something like that. It's crazy down there. Um, but Brenda has uh, over a over hundred uh, very highly productive agents inside of her office. And I think you just started that office in 2019, correct, Brenda? 2019, yes. Yeah. Yes, 2019, right before COVID. But yeah, 2019 is when we launched this office. And, and just we've been fortunate that we've been able to continue to grow through, through everything. Well, you w ran a very large franchise in the Dallas area prior to um, going into Home Smart, and I think that you have a very big fan following, and you've won a lot of awards and recognition. So um, it's wonderful to have you on here today. Uh, you do have a couple of notes that your audio is just a little funny. Um, uh -huh. so hopefully, I know that we were kind of messing with that a little bit before, so hopefully we'll be good to go. All I'll right. try to unplug something to see if I can get that oh, to be a little bit better there. <laughs> <laughs> you sound good there. Well, you there. know, let's go ahead. Um, let's go ahead and poll the audience. So everybody, Jason, if you could go ahead and launch that poll. Like I said, just three quick questions. Um, and this is just going to help us understand who's in the audience. So the first question is, are you actively recruiting or planning to recruit in the balance of this year between now and the end of the year? Um, if you are recruiting, give us an idea of what you're looking for in terms of your agent counts. And then also we've asked a couple of, um, you know, put out a, what aspect of recruiting do you feel like you are struggling with? You know, is it your marketing and storytelling? Uh, is it staffing and resources, training and onboarding or, uh, you know, determining proper outreach channels or even determining with proper outreach channels, determining the proper candidates as well? Um, so go ahead and we'll just wait just a moment while everyone is, is finishing off that poll. We'll have some good information. Wonderful. So 96% of our audience are actively recruiting or recruiting through the balance of the year. Not surprising. 
And wow, over 56% of our audience are going for some big numbers, 25 plus agent counts, um, while 33% are looking for that one to 10 marker and then 11% uh, in the 10 to 25. And let's see where people feel that they are struggling a little bit. Um, so 59% are struggling with determining proper outreach channels. So we're gonna talk about that a bit today. Um, the marketing and storytelling aspect is the second highest, followed by determining ideal candidates, and then looking at dedicated staff and resources, training and onboarding is our lowest percentage. So that does not surprise me at all to see that information. And it sounds like we did a lot of good uh, prepping, Brenda and Barbara, because we're going to address every single one of these aspects today. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. So wonderful. You know, so let's let's jump right in. Let's talk about marketing and storytelling, because I think that this is a really great way for us to sort of kick off and just go full bore here. Um, and, you know, I want to start with a statistic that I recently saw that people are 22 times more likely to remember facts or information if it's told in a story format versus just like a bullet point list, for example. Um, and Barbara, you know, you and I have worked together on recruiting at Allen Tate for, for quite a few years now, and our storytelling is imperative. So why don't we go ahead and, and talk about a little bit about what we do over at Allen Tate? Sure. Well, I always think you can turn any situation into a story. And one of the things that we've captured very much is at Allen Tate, we have a service award, and it doesn't matter what your service award may be. But when you describe a service award, it just sounds like a bullet pointed idea to win something. But when you create the emotion around the story, it leaves something with someone along the way that I think is imperative. We struggled a bit with telling our story to a vast audience. And that's where I think our relationship grew even more, Bonzalin, because our um, chief marketing officer said, we need to tell our story in our voice and stop letting everyone else do so. And that's when you and I, I think, first connected to say, how do we get our voice out there to a large group of people over an extended period of time with something of value? And I think that you don't always have all the answers internally. And one thing we've learned over this past probably 18, 24, 36 months is to take in the experts from the outside as well. And I think that help has been um, invaluable. Yeah. And for me, you know, really learning the Ellen Tate voice. I mean, you guys had so much information that you could provide me. And I just spent time doing a really big deep dive into who is Ellen Tate and, and what does it mean to be an agent and be a part of your culture. Um, and you guys have such a, a wonderful story. And, you know, when we talk about like the storytelling, we talk about story formats, you know, I, I kind of lean into certain things. Like I want to have like that setting. Um, I want to that I like to say the clickbait or the attention grabber, sure. right? Something like, hey, more than 80% of agents struggle and fail in their first year. Exactly. You know? So something like that. Wow. And, you know, and people connect with that, right? And then we have the, your, there's your character. You know, I'm going to introduce you to Marshall, who is an agent at Allen Tate. And here is his story, right? What are the challenges that, you know, maybe Marshall was facing, you know, that he was excited and energetic, um, you know, very heavily invested in what he thought was going to be a, a much faster, you know, payoff for him. And then, you know, that financial stress started to kick in when he wasn't capturing the listings that he anticipated, or he wasn't, you know, getting as much business from his local community, right? So it's something that people, that challenge, that people can really connect with. Um, and then the resolution, right? And how did that turn out for, for Marshall when he joined Alan Tate? How did he tap in and take advantage of the resources, the training, um, you know, the marketing and, and everything that the the um, organization brought to the table? And what did that end up looking like for him in the end? Right. So that's kind of that that story. And people can really connect and find themselves in that. And Barbara, we're actually doing some storytelling with you guys this month where we're showcasing some of your agents who have, you know, come into the Allen Tate family, um, why they chose to come in, what that has meant for them, you know, both personally and professionally. And that campaign is performing really, really well. Yeah. 
And I know I like, um, I really like that we switch up a lot of our soft touches versus our direct call to actions too. And Brenda, you and I are, are really big on this too, um, servant leadership right? Yes. Like ways that we find ways to be of service to the agent community, you know, to your active agents, to your prospective agents, um, and give them, you know, a, a lot of different resources and a lot of value, like you said, Barbara, um, and then really turning that into, okay, you know, now let's have a conversation. So let's talk about, I know you're huge in terms of uh, servant leadership, Brenda. So talk to me a little bit about how you practice servant leadership at Home Smart Stars? Servant leadership for me really is about being engaged and, and, and talking with those agents. And that becomes part of the story. So even when we're talking about the storytelling and maybe asking that agent questions so that we can relate to one of our agents or relate our own experience to them, the servant leadership piece comes into where you can, you can identify for that agent that, hey, we have felt that. We have been there. We understand that. And I've done that myself. So let me show you what works for us and, and really get their buy-in and their engagement. And, and that's what a lot of, of it is, is their engagement. You know, I can tell them, you want to tell them the story that matters to them, that really they can they can be in touch with. So for me, and it's always been funny, you know, I ask enough questions that I find some common ground with them. And then I try to pull into the storytelling piece of it, something that fits with that common ground, fits with something that is of importance to them. And I think that that's a lot of it. You know, when you're telling that story is asking the question also, you know, did you, so you mentioned Marshall as an example, did you ever, did you ever experience what Marshall had experienced or how, you know, what can we do to overcome what Marshall had experienced and to really be able to, to fit in for them. So then that's when you can tie it back into what your company has and what what you can do to help them to get where they need to be. Um, you know, a lot of that is, you know, with social and education and being able to be both in person, both by Zoom. And we've talked about that on, on our prep call too, is that, you know, each of us, we've all had to adjust how much do we do in person and how much do we do by Zoom and and there is a balance there. So it's it's um it's being the servant leadership, you know, being the leader that they want to follow and yet doing it in a humble way so that they want to be around you and you make yourself available to them to be able to do that. That's wonderful. Barbara, you know, you spent 17 plus years in recruiting for Alan Tate. And, you know, and you said the voice is so important, right? And so I think that storytelling, you know, I'm huge on on peer-to-peer type of storytelling, but, you know, how do you, when you're talking to a prospect and or a candidate, um, you know, how do you feel that you reflect, like, what are some of your strategies for telling that really good story that really resonates and connects? And then at what point do you start to involve other team members from Alan Tate into the conversation with the prospect as well? Because I think that that's a pretty st- a strategic approach on your part. Sure, absolutely. I think one of the key elements in my process, so to speak, is to identify the pinch points that recruit has. And so I think too often we just regurgitate everything great and wonderful about our company instead of stopping to say, where's the pinch points for this agent that I can fix, correct, or improve upon? So I think one of the first things I try to do is tell me everything that's fabulous about where you are, because I want to either meet or exceed that. And then tell me where your strategies are that you're having difficulties so I can then address and correct them. So then they see us as a um, solution solver a solution to their needs. Um, And they, oh, wow, I didn't know you could do that. So that's where the voice and the messaging comes in because we're getting our message out there the way we want, but then we're personally and intimately addressing what their specific needs are and they can feel that concern. And I think when people know that you're really interested in that process, it does uh, does resonate for them. The process of when and how we we move that candidate to the next Um, and in-house, so to speak, uh, branch leaders is critical there. Once I identify that somebody 
truly fits within the family of Alan Tate, then, and I think they're ready, that is when I will bring in a broker in charge. If the process is going to be more of an ongoing pipeline, I will hold them a little closer for a while. Because we've come to realize I could have a great personal relationship, but I don't run a branch. My role is to find the finest candidates for every single one of our 70 locations. So, I mean, moving them over is important. Once we kind of go, yeah, they're just about ready. I Not like that, to in, but to be introduced. So, that's wonderful. I like that you both brought up asking questions, listening. Right, Barbara, you said, you know, tell me everything that's fabulous and then tell me the opposite, right? And Brenda, you know, you, in our prep call, you actually talked about like when you're having some of those initial conversations and getting to know your candidates, the power of pulling in one of the agents who might be walking by who you said sticks their head and go ahead and share that story with us because I think that's really valuable for our recruitment audience. It, it's funny because it's not something you can really plan for. And, and it's best when it is completely natural. So, um, you know, we have agents that pop in and out throughout the day. And, and like Barbara, there are times that I will try to introduce the candidate to whatever staff members are here at that time. But I love it when while we're meeting, an agent will come by. And I'm an open door policy person, so the door is usually open. And, and they'll pop their head in just to say hi, because the agents are in and out these days. They don't come and work all day, every day in your office. So they're in and out. So they'll pop their head in to say hi. And, and fortunately, we, we have those relationships built with our agents that I can say, oh gosh, Bob, I'm so glad you popped by. Let me, let me introduce you to Julie that I'm meeting with today. And I love it because so often that agent will go, oh, are you looking to come onto our office? Well, let me tell you about our office and it's fabulous and it's this and it's that. And here's my favorite thing about our office. And it's completely natural. Most of the time, I wish I could record it so that I could, you know, then turn that into videos to, to play for other people. But it, when it comes off naturally like that, they will build a bond. There have been times that I'll have an agent sit down with a candidate and and right in front of me, they talk for 20 or 30 minutes about what, and then I get to listen. And then I get to hear, what do they want? What do they, are they missing? And even though I may have already asked those questions and tried to explore that, when they're talking with a fellow agent, they open up even more. And so when that can happen uh, and when it can be natural like that, so it doesn't feel scripted, it doesn't feel staged, when it can happen that way, it, it's usually done. Like that person moved, that agent moves on and the candidate's like, well, I'm sold, I'm done. What do I need to do to sign? So when you have those opportunities, take advantage of it. Um, it, it, it works so well for the agent to be able to feel welcomed, sure. invited, and, and that someone else, an agent has really been able to, you know, second everything that you've been telling them. So they, they don't look at you like, well, you're the salesperson. You're trying to sell me on this. All of a sudden they go, oh, and I got, I got confirmation from someone else too. That's awesome. So let's talk about key differentiators, because both of you have absolutely fantastic organizations that have tons and tons of amazing resources that are available for all of your incoming agents, all of your um, uh, long running agents. And I'm, you know, kind of curious. So when we talk about, right, our, the storytelling, like how, you know, everybody has marketing technology and CRMs and, you know, all different types of things, right? Um, and there's some unique things that each of your organizations offer, but, you know, how do you position, you know, like the presentation of those key differentiators and, and what makes you truly unique and how do you present those unique aspects in the recruiting process? So Barbara, I know like you guys, um, Alan Tate, you guys are ninja um ninja selling you've got your your health and wealth program these things like how at what part of the conversation do you really start to talk about some of those key differentiators and how they impact the performance of your agents so we don't do um different balance to the strengths within the company but we we really lend it towards the person doing the recruiting to know which ones to truly expand upon 
If you ask the right questions on the front end, you can put more depth on the back end to the things that are the proper pinch points for that recruit. So if I have someone who has a stay-at-home wife and he's, a, he's working as an agent and has no, the health insurance deal is on his own shoulders, I'm going to promote my health and wealth, the Hannah Health and Wealth, a whole lot more because I know that's got more value than the other person's husband or wife is working for a major government and covered in that. So I think it's asking the questions to identify the pinch points and then elaborating more once we know that. But to your point, Bonzalin, you know, real estate companies are, are like banks. You can go down the road and they all offer the checking and the savings and the, the drive through. What makes us special, different and unique? And I think um, the ability to articulate articulate that is not always a comfort zone for the person in the recruiting seat. So I think having more vehicles of which to tell the story is paramount to the success of that hire. And I have to say with Brenda's spontaneity of pulling the recruit in, there's nothing that can trump that, that special moment when they cross paths because they believe them. That peer-to-peer -peer affirmation is of great, great value. So I think that works very much. But I think um, what do you believe in your heart to be special about your company? And that should come out um, by your sincerity. So if you really believe it, they're going to believe you. So I think that's part of it. So we all have yeah. to be retailers, I think, too. And those, you know, that sort of that rapport and, and that trust that you build is is so imperative in, in telling that story about who you are as a company. And I know Brenda, you know, you were talking to me about the fact that, you know, so many agents just deal with so much overwhelm, you know, technology overwhelm and, you know, these people are sole proprietors and they sometimes don't understand that particularly with newer agents coming in, you know, the amount of, of overwhelm that they, they might face. And so I know that with HomeSmart, you know, you're very, very big on, okay, you know, how do I educate them about the technology and, and marketing that we have and how it's in, integrated and, and all of those types of things. So you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. And, and it is, it's, uh, it's kind of like we mentioned, you know, we, most brokerages, we have similar things to offer. So it is about finding what really sets yours apart and, and to be able to remind those agents once they're on board, what you have and what you're giving them. And sometimes it is, um, it is reducing that overwhelm. So we have a series of onboarding emails and tasks and text messages and everything that they get. It's kind of like a drip campaign that goes out uh, once they're onboarded. And so I just share that information that we'll be imparting tidbits on them for throughout the life of their career with us and um, showing them that we are heavily involved, having multiple ways that they can reach out to you, that you can be engaged with them. I'm very, very big on education. So I want to make sure that they have available to them calendar and where to get to recorded things and where to get to live training sessions. And that's part of the way that you show your key differentiators of you and of your company to the agent also. And, and that's that involvement, you know, and I'm on the board of directors for our local association. So agents can see that involvement and they can see that we are, you know, creating a niche for them to really uh, grow their business and to have resources to help them. So when they have a question about things, they've got a multitude of people that they can go to for those questions. And, and I think just the knowledge of that helps to reduce that level of overwhelm and, and that they know that when they have a question, they have a resource to go to, whether it's a recorded session, whether it's an, a live session that's coming up, that we really provide them with a silver platter of tools. And I recognize they won't use every one of those tools, but if they're using one today and a year from now, they decide they want to explore a different tool that they'll have the resources available to them even then to be able to learn more about that tool. So just empowering them with the tools to really be able to grow their businesses when they want to and how they want to, uh, because it will be different. School right now, school is starting 
And so I'm finding already some of our agents go, okay, wait, I have a few more hours available to me again. So it's time for them to be able to explore what they maybe had to put on the, on the side a bit for a couple of months. And, and it's time for them to revisit those things. Yeah, I think we see a lot of like very cyclic kind of behaviors, right? Absolutely. As we the yes. So I'm going to jump around it in our agenda a little bit because that kind of makes me think, and, and I know like one of the big challenges that our audience came up with, right, is, is you know, determining the ideal candidate and then and how to communicate what channels to use to communicate to that candidate. And Barbara, I know that you know, we have a, a very comprehensive approach that, you know, we take with the recruiting that we do um, at Allen Tate, but let's just kind of, you know, go back and talk about the fact, like, if you're trying to attract new agents versus top producers, let's just kind of talk about the, the, the different mindset and the different approach that you take to those types of recruiting conversations. Well, and I think they're two vastly um, different audiences and segmenting recruiting has is, is come to be very, very uh, in the forefront of everything we're doing with you as well. I mean, Bunzlin, you're a part of all of that because the needs and the um, the questions and the fears are very different in those two groups. So I think that really plays an, an awful large role. But I think what we have to also identify is all the things that we think are great and wonderful about our company is not going to resonate with everyone. So the, talking about it more, it really doesn't matter. So until you find out what is most important in that person, I think it's important. So in a new to the business agent, are they prepared financially to go several months on their own? If not, what can you do to help them? Does your company offer anything to help them? You know, do you support them with discounted um, schooling at various real estate schools? Do you have a mentor for them to help them get up and running more quickly? Can you give them more specific data that says how soon they can expect that to happen? So I think showing that you have an actual plan and not an idea for a new to the business agent, I think is critical to gain their trust. Experienced agents, I think they're going to say, I know what I'm doing. How are you going to help me do it better? How are you going to help me do it with less effort? How are you going to help me do it into my twilight years of doing it? So knowing which road you're going to go down, I think is being a little bit uh, fortune teller, you know, crystal ballish which way are they going to go? And I think, again, it goes back to asking the questions and not the yes and no questions, but the leading questions. The more their mouth is going, the more advantage you have. They're going to tell you more that's going to give you what you need for that next conversation. So I think keep them talking and you be quiet. And, Brenda, and that's you're just hard for some mouth. of us. <laughs> I mean, Mike Staver wrote a book, Do You Know How to Shut Up? I mean, it's it's important. You must sometimes give pause. And I think that's when all that comes in. And then you can kind of reposition it to your company. So when it comes back out, it comes back out how my company is going to help you in those things. And it acts as if it was just a new discovery. So some of the companies that I've worked with, and Brenda, you and I have a, a, a mutual experience that we can share here. You know, I see a lot of this over-promising and under-delivering, right? And so when we think about recruiting, we have to think about retention too. And Brenda, I know a couple of years ago, you and I were uh, consulting together for a, a large brokerage in the the um, the Southeast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were boasting the fact that they were bringing in a thousand new agents a year. Mm -hmm. But they also had a very serious problem because they had very, very high churn numbers, over 50 percent, you know, in churn numbers on an annual basis as well. And, you know, that executive team was so in the day to day of the trenches, they, they really could not see where their problem was. And so they had called us in, you know, to sort of do some deep dive and analysis for them and, and find that. And, you know, and it really did, you know, at the end came down to you know, how they were incentivizing their internal recruiters, um, you know, the types of promises that were being made by those recruiters, and then the, the ability to really fulfill that from an internal onboarding and re ongoing resource standpoint, which is a big problem. And so I definitely want to talk about um, the, you know, the recruiting process, the short-term versus long-term goals and strategies, because 
Um, you know, Barbara, we were talking about this in the prep call, you know, recruiters, you have these, these short term, right, immediate, these annual goals and, and results that you're trying to hit, but then you're trying to, you know, determine, find those right recruitment prospects that are really going to be there for a long time and a long, you know, um, story with the company. And so let's talk about that a little bit. You're right, because the recruiting is part of it the retention is the other part of it. And, and so you want, your, your gain is where you can bring on that agent who wants to stay with you. And so that is, we, we keep mentioning asking questions and knowing what we can deliver, but that's part of it is being able to show that agent what the benefits are of joining your, your company, but then making sure that we're checking on the back end, that we're continuing to deliver that so that we're keeping them. And, um, it, and so it is, it is both pieces. It's recruiting and then continuing to recruit your existing agents too. If I may comment on one thing there, I also think is um, being more select licensed and breathing are not the only prerequisites, understanding that, that you, you're selecting someone to join your family. And I think we get caught up in another one, another one, another one. Well, if they're not here in six months, eight months, 10 months, that turn and burn just wears out your leadership team, your, your back-end company, your pocketbook, everything else. So I think we actually promote the tagline of selection rather than recruiting. And I think selection, I think, plays a big role. And I think we are faced with a population that thinks everyone is going to chase them. And not everyone is the right candidate for your environment. And being able to say that positions you even in a different way. And I've often said, thank you very much for your interest. However, we're not prepared to extend an offer to you right now. And they're kind of like shocked. But it doesn't mean because we think who we are, we know it we may not fit in that way. So it's almost we're doing a service to them as well as to ourselves. On the experienced agent, I think we build a better machine. So I'm going to probably pursue a little bit more to make them see that light. So I think it's a little different process in that way. And it's so, it's it's part of our homework to discover who that best agent fit for our, our firm is. Um, and, and then to go ahead and select those agents to follow. So we determine who we're the best fit for. And we all have great companies and we all get excited about our companies and can tout the benefits of our companies. And each and every one of us do have value to bring. Sometimes we don't have the right value for every agent. And we have to recognize that. And when we do recognize it, and then we can really dig deeper on who are we the, who are we the best company for? What candidate are we best for? Can we serve best? Then that's the, the candidate, the agent that we go out and, and try to recruit. Then we're the better fit. We're a better marriage. That's very well said, because there is no right or wrong. It's just different. It's just different. It could be vastly successful in another venue, but may not have been under your umbrella. So mm -hmm. I think that recognition is, is one of the key factors in successful recruiting. So this really goes to one of our talking points, which is setting appropriate expectations, right? As you're as you're vetting that prospective agent and, and working through that process with them. And Brenda, I know one of the things that you and I have been really big on in the past is uh, financial worksheets. Right. So being I think there, there is a business model and a compensation model for every single person out there. I think I've seen every single, you know, <laughs> business model that there is in this space. And sometimes you have to really sit down and do side by side comparisons, um, you know, where you're showing, OK, this is what your current compensation model looks like. This is what that compensation model would look like within our organization and do those side by side comparisons. Um, but then it's always it's not always about money either. Right. It's right. also about the commitment and contributions and training and support and resources or the name brand behind you. There's so many different factors that can impact somebody's choice to to join and align with your organization. But I think the benefit for being able to share that financial component is important. So if they, 
and I, I'm also sometimes so amazed that the agent doesn't quite understand their financial component. So I think we can really help show them and share with them what that is. And again, I love that you said, you know, the financial side is just a piece of it. You want them to embrace, you know, don't just marry the guy for the money. You know, you want the whole, you want the whole thing in there. So um, I do think that's really important to identify. Well, I think it's interesting. So somebody actually put in the chat to us, they inquired about who pays for your health and wealth program, right? And so when we were doing our prep call, you were talking about, you know, having this very encompassing health and wealth program and, and really helping agents understand how the financial impact of that looks sure. on their personal and professional lives. And, you know, that's one of your really, really unique identifiers over at Allen Tate. And the agent does pay for their health and wealth uh, platform, but there's so many pieces. They meet with a planner and it is at a rate of which they could not do on their own on the outside. So it's an advantage for them, but they do, um, they do cover themselves. Awesome. And all of those things can be put into the business plan and to, you know, those financial worksheets where you, do, where you're doing comparisons. So yours, even though the agent is paying for it, don't um, don't keep yourself from putting it on the list. And I know Barbara, you do. I know that is one of the values you propose to an agent. It, and remember that to propose those things that even if the agent is paying for it, that they have access to it. And sometimes it's a discounted uh, rate that they get by being with your company. So those are all values that they may not get somewhere else. So there there is a part of business planning that you want to make sure the agent understands the value proposition of everything. I mentioned that silver platter of tools. It's the silver platter of things that you're giving them and they may use 30% or 80% of what is on that silver platter, but you're able to show them that they have it and then be able to remind them every once in a while that it's still there because their needs will change over time too. And that's why we like doing the business planning on a regular basis because their needs will change from one year to the next based some on their business based some on what the economy or the market is doing and based mostly on what their home life has looked like. What have they, have they sent kids away to school? Have they added children? Have they gotten married or gotten divorced or, you know, are they helping out parents now? Then there are so many things that may impact what they needed two years ago is different than what they need today. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm I'm such a big fan of the business planning and Barbara, I mean, look, you know, we launch, you know, an annual business planning right in Q4 that carries through to Q1. It's a huge conversation starter for you. And then we just finished off uh, this, you know, at the mid-year point, the mid-year check-in, right? So now it's like, hey, you're halfway through your year you know, where do you stand in terms of goal? Uh, what are you trying to accomplish for the balance of the year? What does that look like? How can we be that resource? Those have been really, really huge conversation starters for you. You've had a lot of agents that will raise their hands and want to talk to you about that because those workbooks really point out some serious problems that these people are having. Um, so it's a really great way. And it ties back to that servant leadership right? Where you're providing really valuable resources. And then based on the challenges that those people come to the table, you're so perfectly positioned with that storytelling narrative, right? And I think it's coming, coming together. It does. Yes. It kind of comes down <laughs> because it also showed we always believe in a fluid business plan. The business plan ebbs and flows as life does. I think it also showed by the way we promoted it through you, um, Bonsal in mid-year, that yeah, it's mid-year, so you've got to go take a look at this. It doesn't work unless you work it. So I think that showed, but to show that this is a meaningful part of how we help our agents run their business, and here's a part you can share in without even being here. So we did give them about, I think that was the first one that we broke like a 50% open rate on or something. So it was crazy. So that was really good. Well, yeah, it, it shows your commitment throughout the year too. It shows absolutely. that you didn't just spend one day helping them with, with the business plan and then forget about it. You went forward to offer them the opportunity to do the mid-year check-in. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I love to work with clients like Alan Tate that are big on servant leadership, you know, that are there and they're saying, hey, you know, we are an integral part 
of um, real estate in the Carolinas. And we want to be here to be a resource of you. And it, Barbara, it's like you said, you know, sometimes it's just not the right time for that person to come over, but you want to have that rapport and that relationship with them and be of service. And so I love, you know, that we do put out an awful lot of content, um, you know, resources, workbooks, you know, documents, um, all kinds of things like that. And then we also have a lot of those just really soft, warm, fuzzy touches. Um, you know, this spring, we spent a month just showcasing the success of, of your agents and, and honoring the agents and, and everything that they do across your greater community, right? And because we are seeing those, you know, 50% plus open rates consistently month after month, you have people constantly raising their hands every single month to have those conversations with you. You know, we know that we are telling the right story. We've got highly engaged audience, you know, and whether it's the time for them to raise their hand and pull that trigger, they are paying attention and engaging with the Allen Tate story. No, I really, I really think that's true. And, and I can't get over the, um, the downloads where they do them. And then they even reach out sometimes and ask for help and they don't even work for us. So it, being able to share that goodwill amongst, they are colleagues, you know, they're just not colleagues under our roof, I think is shows who you are to an audience out there that you're willing to do those things. I think that's very important. It is. So it brings me to our point, always be recruiting. <laughs> um, and, you know, we know that recruiting is a year round effort, you know, to really establish trust, to stay at top of mind, to build that and, and maintain your ongoing rapport. And Barbara, I, I, I hate to say this, but in our prep meeting, you, you really like put the nail in the coffin where you said there's no secret sauce. There is none. Just do the work. Pay attention. <laughs> Um, well, you know, is there a secret sauce to selling real estate? There is not. So it's, it's no different than the way an agent would build a sustainable business is the way a recruiter needs to build a recruiting plan, staying in touch, showing you care, being consistent. Um, you know, I don't drop the details, you know, it's the same thing and seeking out those that know better than you how to do them. So I think grabbing a little bit from each component to improve upon who we are is very much uh, a part of it. But um, I think that um, the market is ever changing and will continue to do so even more. So knowing what you're, you're really special about and where you stand out is, is a key component to successful recruiting. Brenda, <laughs> share, share your uh, red folders with us. <laughs> so it's funny because Barbara had mentioned the red folder, but we both have red folders that we keep and it's literally the manila file folder that is red. And that is the folder that keeps hot topics in it. And uh, it, it is funny. And, and so it's funny because Barbara mentioned it. And here we are, you know, half a country away from each other. And when we were talking about it on the call, I pulled out mine and said, I have mine too. So that was the first time I, I switched gears from recruiting um, in a different venue to recruiting in real estate. The gentleman that hired me came in and bought a box of red, on, red folders on my desk. Now we're much more digital now, so I don't use them as frequently. And he said, you should always have top of mind awareness. They're red folders because you recruit every day. And that was just, it never went away. And I will say every time I pull a red folder out or even glimpse at it, I think about that message. So there is, again, a story. You know, the stories do linger. They stay, they remain, they resonate. So I think telling them is a good way to go. So some of the things that you guys were saying to me in our planning uh, meeting, voice to voice is imperative. Number one. Right. I and, love and in person when I can get in person. That's not always possible. It's not always feasible. I have agents throughout the state, so it's physically not always possible. But uh, voice to voice, we can always do. Zoom, we can do. Um, but but yes, you you build so much more rapport when you can hear each other. I, think so. I also have warm up leads. So there's no cold calling. Right. And Barbara, we're huge at that. Like we have, you know, with the campaigns that we run for you, you know, through email, across social media, you know, landing pages, downloads, ebooks, all of these different ways that we're reaching out and touching those audiences. 
you know, we have a composite snapshot of all of your prospects, what they're engaging with. We know what, at what point did they finally raise their hand to have that conversation, right? What was that trigger for them? And Barbara, you were really big. One of your notes to me was, you know, paying attention to the details, right? And we used my cat. I, I'm, I'm shocked. I have a cat that every time I'm on a Zoom meeting, I have a cat that jumps up and thinks that he should be on it. I'm shocked that he did not make a, a surprise visit to everybody. But Barbara knows that. And every time we get on a meeting together, she's always like, you know, where's the cat? <laughs> he's going to, he's going to pop in. But then people like, you know, you've got it. When you remember those things, it's not just about business. If you say you really care and we're a family here, you need to show that it can't be just be the talk. So either that's the real deal or it's not. So I think that really plays a big, a big role. And I think like with the downloads, I can reach out and call anyone who downloaded it. I don't consider that cold cold, because I can say, hey, Brenda, I saw you downloaded the business plan. Do you need any help in doing it? So that warmed up because you flagged them as that they've downloaded. So I can see who that is. So I think that that all just helps. It's just another part that it's keeping track of it all that can get challenging. So. And, and then and that's the consistency part. So if you can stay consistent with it, then you're staying in front of them. and and I'm big on consistency because you never know when they may have, whether it's time or an issue that's come up that all of a sudden they care more about, about listening to what you have to say about your company. And they may, if you can stay in front of them, just the simple little reminders. And if you've built any connection to them, then they're much faster for them to pick up the phone and call you when they need you. And that those are the calls I love. And that's something I learned also with Bondolin was at first I thought these are too many touches in a short period of time. And I said, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen. And we did it. And the opt-out rate was so low. I said, okay, wait a second. I guess if you're sending the right message in the right context to the right people, it's not. So staying in that flow has worked very effectively. Um, so I think that communication happens because I had a recruit that took 23 months until they joined us because it wasn't right. If I wasn't still staying in touch, that could have been one that went somewhere else. So I think that that was a really strong lesson. And once again, we keep looping back to the beginning, right? Our, our whole storytelling. So, you know, finding, you know, who are those ideal candidates? What do they look like? What are their needs and challenges? And then how do we really convey that in a really meaningful and authentic way? And I think that we've really, you know, nailed that. So I guess that's, if there is a secret sauce, Barbara, that's the secret sauce, right? I think so. Wonderful. So um, we have a quick little poll here for our audience. We've got some questions that have come in. I want everybody to start, you know, posting your questions. You have questions for Barbara, for Brenda, for me. Um, here comes the closing poll. So if you'd like to schedule an exploratory conversation with me to see what, you know, what you're doing with your recruiting, um, how I could help work with you and enhance that, go ahead and click the yes, please contact me and I'll reach out to you on the backside here. Um, and also I am going to be launching a email newsletter through Wave Group where I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite recruiting tips and tricks and strategies. And so if you would like to register or to be in that email list, go ahead and make the selection there under um, question number two, and we'll make sure that you are in that list. So we'll let that run for just a few minutes. One of the questions that came in, Barbara, um, are your offices only in the Carolinas? I am in the PNW Washington state area. Do you have offices in the Western states? Somebody wants to talk to you from out West. <laughs> they can talk to me from anywhere they are. So the Allen Tate company is only in North and South Carolina. Uh, the Howard Hanna partnership spreads across the, the Northeast right through to Cleveland, Indiana, um, in, in the Ohio market, New York upstate. But I think real estate is universal. I think the things we do are universal. I've worked with people, you know, you're in LA, this one's in, in Chicago, this one's in Miami. So I think, um, you know, wherever somebody may be, if they want to chat, I will always open to do that. That's how I got to you. It was someone in South Florida who suggests, who mentioned you to me and that connection happened. We didn't know each other. You didn't solicit. No. It just happened. 
Yeah, it was a it was a, a mutual referral, and we just started having a conversation, and we knew that we could uh, you know make a real impact with everything that you're doing. So you guys are always such a treat to work with too. I love working with you and Karen and the team. <laughs> Thank you. It's a perfect example of what we're talking about to, today too: the conversation and carrying on the conversation, and then being able to help each other out. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I trusted the referral. So I trusted the referral. So that put that into too. his trust into Bondolin. So it just, when you think about that, that's where those connections kind of happen too. Yeah, I really, I love, you know, business growth rate initiatives. So, I mean, I just love doing recruiting. I love working with companies on telling a really meaningful story, um, you know, and, and it's so immediate. The, the types of responses and reactions that we get are so immediate through the different digital marketing channels that we use that we can literally put out messaging and, and you know, within hours have a really strong understanding of how that messaging is resonating with the audience. So we can be very uh, responsive. We can shift, we can pause, we can change the way that we're saying something. We can A-B test so easily. You know, there's a lot of really wonderful things that we can do through a lot of contemporary digital channels that um, just really give us so much insight into who the audience is and, and what they want to hear about from us. So it's really wonderful. Jason, I think we can go ahead and, and close out that poll. Um, I hope everybody has had the opportunity. And obviously, you're, I'm going to send a follow-up email tomorrow anyway to everyone. Um, so you can always reply back to me if you'd like to have a conversation. Um, I'm going to ask if you have any final questions for anyone, please go ahead and put those into the chat or the Q&A. And, um, and while we are doing that, I'm going to ask each of you for your closing thoughts. So Barbara, would you like to go first? Huh. Okay. Um, I think we did count on a lot of things, but I think when Bondolin and I and Brenda were chatting, when we talked about the ability to stay in a cadence of communication over an extended period of time with a targeted group of people, giving them something of value. So I think if you do that consistently in an ongoing fashion, you will see an uptick in your recruiting. It's not the one and done. It's not the one call and leave a voicemail. It's that that staying in that flow with them, just as you would if you when you were selling real estate. In that way. So I think that would be my closing thought. Brenda, how about you? I cannot agree with that any more than I do. A hundred percent. It is the consistency. It is a long-term relationship. I mean, you're looking for people. Think of it more like a marriage than just dating. You want someone who will be with you for the long term. So I agree with everything you said. A hundred percent. I would add to that too that when you're talking with individuals. Let the love of your brand, whatever your brand is and whatever your tools are, let the love of your brand show through. Absolutely. Agents are going to connect with you because it is that long-term relationship. And even though you are also going to be bringing in other people um, from the office to, to share in that relationship, they're going to connect with you. So that's that's why we've talked about storytelling. It's why we've talked about the different ways to reach out with them. But let the love of your brand show. They'll connect with that. They'll get excited about it, And that that is something that they want to be a part of too. So I remember when I very first started recruiting, I thought I needed to be all, you know, professional and, and, and think about it. When as agents, they first went into that first listing or that fi first buyer presentation, they thought the same thing. And eventually they, sh they have learned just like you're learning as a recruiter that your your love of the brand and letting your personality come through is what they connect with. So um, feel free to, to be yourself and to love your brand and let that show through. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think it's really important to be authentic, right? I don't think anybody yes. ever said, I love being marketed and sold to. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> ever said that, right? Um, and so, you know, looping all the way back to the beginning when we were talking about, you know, that, that storytelling, the power of that storytelling, um, you know, and really finding really unique and meaningful ways to share, you know, the authenticity of who you are as a person, you know, as the professional, as the broker, as the recruiter, um, as a collective organization, um, you know, where are those unique identifiers? And then how do you really um, use your listening power 
to understand, you know, what the needs and challenges of your prospects are, and then how do you tell them a really meaningful and authentic story. And I think that, you know, companies that can do that, recruiters that can do that are always going to be successful nine times out of 10. I think so. So wonderful. Well, ladies, thank you so much. You guys are always such a, a wonderful treat. And I hope that everybody um, that joined us today we've got some really great takeaways. I would love to have a conversation with anybody who is looking for some recruiting assistance, whether it's identifying your prospective audiences, telling that really meaningful story, you know, understanding digital marketing channels and how to best use those. Uh, whatever the case is, I have seen it and done it all. So please feel free to reach out and connect with me. Brenda and Barbara, thank you both so much for joining me today. I hope thank that you guys can stay you. cool in this heat. <laughs> thank well, you. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. Thank all right, you everybody, so much. Thanks so much. Yeah.